Welcome to What a Relief. I'm Dave Riley. Now that once you've learned that uh, uh, carving, your friends are going to probably going to ask you to do some lettering and make a sign for them. Uh, probably they will ask you to do an elaborate sign and have to have it by next Thursday. Well, that isn't quite the way. But since we're going to be doing that, I want to discuss lettering. Um, it's a very simple process. It doesn't take an awful lot of tools. And uh, we're going to cover the uh, types and styles of lettering that's best for carving, and then the techniques, spacing, and all the other things that go with it. Now, a sign can be as elaborate or as simple as you want. This sign here is fairly simple. Uh, it's the Roman type of lettering. Uh, the other types, if you want to get a little bit more elaborate, is the sign that I have here. What with more carving, this is in mahogany uh, with the embellishment of the uh, ribbon. But again, it, the, the carving itself is relatively simple. So that is what we're going to carve and uh, study today. Now Chris was working with a CNC router, which is a computer control routing system, and produced this sign. And it gives a good example of how a machine type of lettering uh, will appear. Now if you'll notice in here that he was using a 45 degree pointed router bit, and the bottom of these verticals are a sharp point, as you would expect, but as you can see here, we have a radius in each corner again over in here. So this is characteristic of a routed type of uh, lettering. Now if you look at the hand type, you will notice that by doing it with the carving tools, with the chisels, you get much sharper, crisper detail than you would with a machine carved or machine routed uh, lettering. So since I teach wood carving, this is the way we're going to do it today. Now there are many good publications and resources out for lettering and carving on lettering. One book that I highly recommend is this Letter Carving in Wood. Uh, it's a practical course by Chris Pye and it's published by the Guild of Master Craftsmen Publications. It's printed in England. It is an excellent book. Um, I, so I, if you're going to be doing any lettering, I highly recommend that you obtain this book and use it as a guide. Now, where are you going to get your lettering sources? Uh, since you're using a DVD to see this, you obviously have a computer. The word processing section of your computer software is a fund of different types of carving styles. These were done from the ordinary uh, lettering. Uh, if you have a CAD program, uh, they have many, many different types of lettering as well. Those you can manipulate much more than you can in a word processing uh, program. These were printed from the computer. This is a Roman type of style, which is really one of the better styles for carving. Other resources are books on um, hand lettering. Um, many art books have lettering samples in them. One thing that you really must remember is that because it looks nice in two dimension on a piece of paper, it may not be appropriate for your carving. You're working in an entirely different medium and you're working in three dimension. The style and the width of the lines in pen and ink is simply the width. What produces that in a carving is the shadowing. So that depth is the important factor here. So if you are picking up a type of fount that you're interested in, I suggest that you do carve some test pieces first just to see how it's going to go. Also, a small lettering, a fine detail, and a very coarse piece of wood, the coarseness of the wood may detract uh, very much from the uh, lettering style. So it's, it's really a judgment call. It's a matter of aesthetics. And I'm really not going to go in that today I'm more interested in the actual technique of carving and uh, getting you started in that direction. What I'm going to use as an example today is this uh, lettering. Uh, it's, it's a Roman style. Um, if you're interested to see how Roman lettering looks, go to a cemetery. Most of the tombstones there are done in a Roman um, form of lettering 
and you see how sharp and crisp and clear it is and it can be seen from virtually any distance. These were taken from a uh, um, computer program. Uh, when you print these out, print out multiple copies because in some cases you may spoil one and have to work on another. It saves a lot of time. Now, the important thing about laying out lettering is logic says that you have all of your letters equally spaced. Well, you don't. What you do is you space them so that they look optically correct, not mechanically correct. Otherwise, they start to look like a uh, stencil. Now, in this sample, you can see here, there's a lot of space here between the R and the V, uh, more so apparently than there is between the others. This W here could be moved over slightly to give it a more balanced look. So what I have done is I have taken that enlarged version, I have cut the page apart, and then I move them back and forth and retape them. So you can see here now I have a little closer space. I have closer space here between the A and the C, and I have moved this V and the R closer together. So though they are not mechanically evenly separated, optically, and that is the really the important thing, optically they appear to be evenly spaced, and that is what you are working for. And that's the most important thing of all. Now remember all of your lettering, this is just a pattern, just as you use a pattern for any other type of carving that you're going to do. And you have to get the outline or trace it or attach it to your material is the first step. Here I've taken my corrected and adjusted uh, template or pattern uh, and put it on the wood. What I do is I draw a line either through or directly underneath the uh, letters when I'm first printing them. This is a reference so that when I have to cut things apart, I have a reference line to line things up. It also helps so that when I'm putting it on the wood, I can use a square or a ruler to adjust where the, uh, uh, it falls on the wood and stays uh, well aligned. The next thing is, is to trace it onto the wood. Now in some cases, you may want to just glue your pattern right to the wood and just carve it away because you'll be finishing the wood. In this case, I'm using transfer paper. I don't use carbon paper. Carbon paper has a tendency to be rather oily. So I will use this transfer paper, which you can get at art supply stores and so on. Then I, I will take a straight edge, in this case a small triangle, and I will just start now and trace the lines in. Use a straight edge because you want to have a straight as reference line as you can for your tooling. And you just go on down the line until you get all of the letters done. And then when you're finished, you will, if you've done everything well, you now have your pattern laid out on the wood. Now, you want a pattern so that you will be able to put in a center line because the center line, as you will see when we're doing the carving, is essential because that is where the first cuts will be. So once you get that, you now have your pattern, but you can see now here I have a center line drawn because this is going to be the guide for the first cut of my uh, carving. And you'll do that on all of them. You can make any little adjustments as necessary and then you will be ready for your carving. So that's the next step we're going to do. We'll get our tools out and discuss the tools and we'll start and do a little bit of carving. Now before we start actually carving it might be a good idea to take a look and see what a, uh, a carved letter looks like. Now this is the, the typical, classical, uh, Roman style of letter. And as you can see here, here's your serifs at the top and at the bottom. Uh, the angle that you carve down at is approximately 60 degrees. And as you saw on the pattern, I had a center line. 
And what we will do is we will chop down in the center and then come in and remove that uh, wedge-shaped piece at approximately a 60 degree angle. Now the smaller horizontal uh, strokes of a letter are generally much thinner. And a mistake some people make is they try to have the bottom of this narrow reach the bottom of the wide opening. And that is not the way it's done. They maintain the same 60 degree angle so that if it's narrower, they will not go down as deeply. Now, there's a couple of ways of figuring out what is a correct 60 degree angle. The simplest, here's 65 degrees, is just to make yourself a little angled wedge uh, to use as a guide. So that as you're doing your carving, you can come in and just follow it. I have another one here so that when I work from either side, it's very handy. Now, if you're going to do a lot, uh, there's another little trick of doing it. If you hold your tool vertically and then come down halfway, obviously that's 45 degrees, come up a little bit and you'll just about hit the 60 degree angle just about perfectly. So you don't always have to use a gauge, but I like to have a gauge when I start my carving just to remind myself what is the 60 degree and just have it to keep myself aligned. But that is the letter. This is the style of letter that we're going to carve. And as you can see, everything is at the 60 degrees. Now the sequence to carve is we have laid out the, the letter in pencil. We have drawn in our center line. Now at the, where the surfs start to come out is where we stop this center line. And to produce that first cut, we simply take our straight chisel and chop straight down in. If your chisel isn't wide enough, you can, you'll move down and finish that cut. Then the next step is to come in at that 60 degrees and chop these pieces out from either side. This first cut is essentially a stop cut. Then after that, we can come back and complete these ends. On all types of lettering, here is an E. Again, we go down the center. We chop out the sides at our 60 degree. Then we can go back and do the horizontal strokes, chopping them out, and then come back and finish the serfs. Uh, an R is the same in all cases except for the curve. But again, in the curved area, we make a curved stop cut. In an S, we just have a much longer, you have to work with curved to, uh, uh, gouges to produce your center cut, your stop cut, and then we cut them out. So let's start, we'll start with a um, a vertical, an eye, and we'll go through that whole process. Now a point to remember is that the bottom of the vertical stroke and the bottom of this end here, they, that cut should join and meet right here at the bottom. So that this is a continuous V cut here. That's something important to remember and I'll show you how that we're going to do that. Now. The tools I'm using are fairly straightforward. I use a, just a wide, straight chisel. If you do a lot of work, I would suggest you get a chisel with the double bevel because when you chop down straight, the chisel will go straight down in. If you use a single bevel, you have to angle it slightly, otherwise it's going to drift off. So if you do a lot of work, a double bevel is the way to go. Otherwise, I prefer a single bevel for most of my work. Um, I use a small straight fishtail for getting into corners. Sometimes on a little larger piece I may have to use a other straight to get in the detail. And then to finish off my the tops I'll use a number three fishtail. Uh, anything that is comparable to this works fine. This is just the way I do them. So the first step is to chop down
and then move up to finish that cut. Now you'll notice that I've only come up to this line, not all the way to the top. This is the first step. And now I can come in at my 60 degrees. Now I have my center cut. The next point now is when I mention that the bottom is supposed to meet here, we make a new stop cut. And what you do is, if you come in, put the corner of the tool right at the end of the bottom of the stop cut, and then just roll it out. So now you have a cut which starts at the bottom here and ends at the top here. And you'll see how that helps. I'll do them all while we're at it. Now I can use my number three fishtail and I will come in here now and make my curve. And then with my straight fishtail, and now I have my letter I. Take the static photo that I overlay. Now the next letter that we will do uh, is an E, which has the vertical and the horizontal. So again, the first step is to make our center stop cut, moving up to get the correct length. I make my little stop cut at the end. And now I take out that exactly as we have done the, the letter I. It's simply an I with a couple of extensions on the side. Taking my straight fish tail, making my stop cut at the top. curve done. Some people will make this as a straight cut. I just prefer the slight curve that I get using a number three rather than a straight chisel. That's just a matter of taste. Now it's time to do the horizontals. Now in this case, my tool is much too big. So I will just step across with the, with a shorter tool. Now in this case, the going with the grain, parallel to the grain in this soft basswood, you can just press down by hand. You really don't need to use the mallet in this case. And again, I will trim for the, the end of that groove so that I don't get any breakout. Letter carving is a lot of pick it up and put it down. You're not going to be doing holding a tool for a very long when before you have to pick up the next tool. And then in here, Again, some people use a knife for this. Um, it's perfectly acceptable. 
I prefer to use a straight gouge because this guarantees a straight edge where a knife can wander slightly and you'll start to see these differences. And now we come in here with our, our cut. Just to define these. Using my number three. Once you get a, a series going, it's a rather quiet, peaceful kind of work. You get into a rhythm. There's always a little clean up that has to be done from time to time. And now you have the letter E. Now the next problem that we have, now we're going to start dealing with the curves. But again, they're just as simple as the straight. Uh, you do the, the stop cut. This means selecting a gouge of the appropriate size, however. And now I have my center stop cut. And here, what we do is we slide the tool around so that you actually are taking a cut that's larger than the tool itself because you slide and skew it as you come around and you will get a nice, clean, smooth cut. Get that out. Now we have that. The other side is a bit more of a challenge, whereas you have to come in and make a cut coming the other way. And again, for this size lettering, this number three fishtail for me is just ideal. Uh, larger letters, you could use a different size. And then at the top and the bottom, it is essentially straight. So there you're going to be using a straight chisel to finish it off. But the important thing is, is get these corners where all these lines terminate sharp and crisp as you can. Now you have your letter R completed. Now last and a bit more complex is the uh, letters that have our all curves, such as the S and the O and the C and so forth. So what we do here is, again, we make our center line. But here we use a little trick that we, I've shown before on handling the tools. I don't have a gouge that fits this curve that I need exactly. But as I have shown before, if you tip it up so that the leading edge is out of the wood, you can twist and follow a curve that is actually tighter and smaller than the curve of the tool you're using. So you'll use this manipulation. And then over in here, I will do the same thing. Now for the transition area in the center, you can just use a fairly shallow gouge to make that cut. Then you can come back with your the same tool. In this case, it was a number six to start and cut out. Again, you're using that curve, skewing and swing it around. Come in from the back, 
to get the top. Now in this case I'll use a number five, a very narrow five to start and get that, this inner curve, as you might call, take that piece out. If all goes well, that piece should come right out as a single piece. You shouldn't have to nibble because you want to get as smooth a cut as is possible. You know, here we're going to get this side. trim that end piece so that it'll come out neatly. There we go. And then just a little dressing up as I go around. And then it's a matter of finishing off the bottom and the ends just as you did the others. There's your cuts. This one up here is a little smaller. Take this and finish that one. Come in here and do this one. And on and on and on. Finishing with the This is important for holding your tool. Be sure you have your hand resting firmly on the wood so that you have the best possible control. This takes a lot of care. And then it's simply a matter of coming around and cleaning up any rough spots. I won't take the time to do that today. but And then there you have it. Any of these pencil marks, of course, they will be sanded away uh, when you're finished. That's, that's part of the finishing uh, technique. Now, when you do the carving, it's logical that you start from the left to the right, as you would normally read. Uh, but that's not the way you do it in carving. When you carve a long letter or any, any words, you start in the center. And then you work alternate. You work back and forth, moving out to the end. The reason for this is, unless you're a very good carver and you're doing this every day and you have your skills up solid and permanent, your first letters may not be quite the quality that your subsequent letters are going to be. A slightly defective letter in the center is not as noticeable as one in the beginning. This will stand out just terribly. But if this bad one is buried in the center somewhere, so start in the center and work your way out on all of your words and you'll have much more success. So that's about it for the technique of doing letter carving. As you can see, it's not a very complicated process. Uh, if you avail yourself to all the resources that are out there and practice, 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 I'm sure you'll be successful. Thanks for watching. This is Dave Riley for Woodworking at Home.